Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracy's The Populist Dialogues. Our program promotes progressive, populist perspectives on the issues of the day. The Alliance for Democracy is dedicated to establishing true democracy, creating a just society based on an equitable, sustainable economy. Our guest today is Juan Carlos Ordonez, Communications Director with Oregon Center for Public Policy. So welcome to the show. Great to be on the show, David. Yeah, great. Yeah, so uh, talk a little bit about the Oregon Center for Public Policy, what it is, why it exists. Yeah, we are a nonprofit, nonpartisan research institute. We analyze tax, budget, and economic data. And the reason why we do that is because ultimately if you want to create economic opportunity for all Oregonians, you need to understand the public structures, the, the public policies that create opportunity or diminish opportunity. Uh, and so we look at the data so that we can make informed decisions and really advance policies that benefit all Oregonians, especially our particular focus is really low and moderate income Oregonians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you put out reports and email we, alerts. And yes, sort of we, we publish everything that we publish, all our analysis we make available on our website, ocpp.org, uh, and we go back, we've been around for now more than 20 years, so you can go back to the very beginning and find all our analysis on mm -hmm. our webpage. Uh, yeah, I, I quite frequently do you know, visit your webpage and I do get those announcements and I really do recommend to people uh, that they do that because the information is, number one, mostly not available other than through you. Um, yeah, that's right. This is, uh, there's data uh, that exists, but someone has to <laughs> analyze and crunch the numbers, mm -hmm. and, and, that's, and that's what we do, and we make it available for all, all Oregonians. Yeah, great, yeah. And I just happen to have one of those. Uh, I think this is like about... Uh, seven or eight page long fact sheet that you put out in October called uh, Highest Earning Oregonians Pull Away, A View of the State of Working or Oregon. It was highly, highly informative. And truly, this is not information I would get anywhere else. Uh, you know, so, so congratulations for the great work you've well, been doing for all this you, time. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Great, yeah. So um, we wanted to talk about wealth and income inequality as our focus today. Uh, and so I have this little introduction. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna read this. Uh, income and wealth inequality around the world in the United States and in Oregon have been on the increase for the past several decades beginning in the uh, early 1980s. A couple of recent headlines just from, the, from news sources tells this story. Oregon's richest, excuse me, world's richest 500 see their wealth increase by $1 trillion this year. Another headline, now five men own almost as much wealth as half of the world's population. And a recent report from the Economic Policy Institute reported that since the Great Recession of uh, 2009, the lion's share of income gains has gone to the richest 1% of the, uh, in the United States. So what we're seeing, I think, is a stretching of the gap between the very, very wealthy and the middle class and certainly the poor. Would you agree? Absolutely. And this has been a, the long-term trend, both uh, nationally and here in Oregon, that we've seen for, for about four decades now. Uh, and the report that you mentioned that we published back in October really illustrates this in the case of Oregon with sort of putting a number to it. So our data series, and we looked at uh, tax data, and the data series begins in 1980, uh, and the most recent year that we had uh, was 2015. And over that period, uh, what we saw is that the Oregonians at the very top of the income ladder, the top, the richest one out of every 1,000 Oregonians. Richest one tenth of a percent? Uh, they, it's, that's right, that's what we call the, the top one tenth of one percent. Mm -hmm. uh, that group, uh, it takes, uh, in 1980 it took, uh, if you look at the Oregonian right in the middle in, uh, of the income ladder, it took 26 of them to equal the income of the average member of the top one tenth of one percent. So a ratio of 26. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the situation in 2015, that ratio had grown to 126. It took 126 middle-income Oregonians to equal the income of, the of that group at the very top. Well, five times more. Right, and that was in 2015 a record high. We have not seen that before. 
Uh, and so it's been, there's been a lot of ups and downs in terms of sort of that, that ratio gap, but, but the trend has been unmistakably, unmistakably rising for the past mm -hmm. uh, almost four decades. Mm -hmm. Any uh, thoughts about why this has been happening? Uh, there's no one re reason one can boil it down to. Uh, one thing is clear, though, that it has not happened by accident. Mm -hmm. It has been the result of public policy choices enacted by administrations on both sides of the aisle and, and, and lawmakers on, uh, you know, it's been a bipartisan <laughs> affair in terms of the policy decisions that have exacerbated income inequality. So, uh, but in terms of sort of the broad uh, causes of inequality, I, I think one has to stress the, uh, the uh, number of Americans uh, who belong to unions. The unions, uh, if you look at the period when the middle class was at its strongest, at its, its more solid footing, uh, which is the post-war period, sort of mid 40s to, uh, to in, into the mid 1970s, we had a much bigger share of people who belonged to unions and unions Really, it, it's not an exaggeration to say that unions built the middle class mm -hmm. um, and in their ability to raise wages, not just for folks who belong to unions, but for whole industries, for, for the whole swath of workers. And as we've seen uh, unions, uh, unionization rate decline, we've seen, uh, we've seen income inequality rise. Mm -hmm. That's clearly one factor one has to point out. Another sort of broad sort of cause is the disinvestment in, in the public sector and the kinds of structures that create economic opportunity for, for everybody. So for example, here in Oregon, we've seen m significant disinvestments in education. Uh, our schools, our public schools have been in a state of chronic underfunding since Measure 5 in, in 1990. Mm -hmm. uh, college tuition has been rising way faster than inflation and meanwhile, the state has been disinvesting. And so college tuition rises. It puts kids uh, coming out of college and in, in carrying a, a whole lot of debt. Um, it's just one, of the, one example of the kinds of disinvestments that we've seen. Mm -hmm. And then the, um, I would say that the a bir a third big factor is uh, tax policy, uh, especially at the federal level we've seen uh, a lot uh, tax code that's a lot less progressive uh, and here in Oregon we've seen an explosion of uh, tax subsidies and loopholes for the most well-off so uh, those are certainly three sort of factors that are at play here mm -hmm. okay. so uh, talking about the tax policy I want to talk about Oregon specifically but just a minute let's let's, let's focus on this tax reform that uh, Trump and the Republicans have passed through Congress recently? Yeah, it's, it's very worrisome. I mean, it's uh, rather than enacting laws that will uh, push back against income inequality and will create opportunity for more people, this is going in, the, in exactly the wrong direction. By and large, the, the law passed by Congress uh, in late December, it was rushed through. Uh, so there's a lot about it, about it that we don't know, but this much we know that it's a big giveaway for corporations and the rich, and it's so it's gonna it's gonna make matters worse. It's gonna exacerbate income inequality in the long run. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So yeah, in in, in particular, then the the, the uh, tax went down from thirty nine percent to twenty five percent. Well, that, for it, that that's the twenty percent was the the reduction for uh, corporation oh, for yeah, corp right. the corporate rate. Uh, the top income tax rate went down, but not, not quite as much. But there are a bunch of provisions in there that in one way or another uh, reduce taxes for, for the most well-off. Uh, it was a mammoth tax package. Uh, folks have not yet caught up with it, and mm -hmm. it was passed so quickly that there was very little vetting of many provisions. So we, there's a lot of mines that haven't exploded yet that we will see as time goes on. There's, uh, the complexity of this thing is such that I think one of the... <laughs> Important things to understand about tax policy is that the more com complex it is, the more the more opportunities there are for those who can hire accountants to and lawyers mm -hmm. to to game the tax system mm -hmm. and come up with clever new ways to get around uh, uh, around paying taxes. And right. so uh, this is going to provide a lot of jobs for accountants and tax lawyers for years to come. Okay, so if I was young and wanting looking for it, looking for it, <laughs> a, a, it's a growth opportunity. A, a growth <laughs> opportunity, right? Yeah, for professional uh, uh, development. So, so uh, let's let's go to talking about income inequality in Oregon and, and, and draw the distinction between 
uh, income inequality and wealth inequality. So income, income inequality, so when we talk about income, it's just how much money do you make in any given year, whatever source of your income might be. For most Oregonians, that income is their paycheck. Uh, for Oregonians at the top of the income ladder, they, they not only make a lot more money, they also make their money in, in different ways. Most of, for them, most of their income comes from owning assets, such as stocks, bonds that provide income each year, uh, or owning a business. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, it's how much money income, when we talk about income inequality, it's just looking at a particular year and how much money you made that year. Mm -hmm. And income inequality is extreme. Even more extreme is wealth inequality. And wealth is basically your net worth. When you take all your assets, everything you own, and you subtract all your debts, you're left with your, with your wealth, with your net worth. Uh, Wealth inequality is even more extreme. Uh, uh, certainly we know that from national figures. We don't have good data on wealth uh, here in Oregon, but certainly uh, everywhere else, wealth inequality is, is a, lot, it's mm -hmm. a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, and those, those uh, headlines I read at the, at the beginning of this uh, kind of tell that story in terms of, the f now five men own almost as much wealth as half of the world's population. Um, that that kind of tells tells that story. And, and I should add that, you know, you asked about the causes of income inequality. I think it's also a, another factor that's important to, to underscore is that income inequality itself is a driver of, income in, of, of more inequality. So income inequality begets more income inequality. Uh -huh. And it happens for a, for a couple of reasons, because if you are basically, you know, just living paycheck to paycheck, as many even middle income families are these days, you have very little left over to invest, to put, to put aside uh, and invest in a business or, or buy stocks or whatever. Mm -hmm. The rich uh, have a lot of money left over and they're able to invest and so they acquire more income producing assets and so it's one way in which income inequality feeds more income inequality. Yeah. Another way is that those who have a lot of money are able to influence uh, public policy choices made by elected officials. It get money in our democracy translates into power. Mm -hmm. And we see that uh, the Trump tax plan is exhibit A. Uh, it's a tax plan designed for special interests and for, for the well-off. I mean, it, it, there really is no way to understand that tax plan in any other way. Mm -hmm. yeah, right, yeah, yeah. So let's, let's, let's talk about the in income inequality in the state of Oregon. How has that changed over a period of time? Well, it's been uh, in a long-term trend upward uh, with its ups and downs, but ultimately a, an upward trend such that, um, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, in, 20, in 2015, the most recent data that we have, those at the very top of the income ladder, the top one-tenth of one percent, they are at a record high in terms of income and also income how far they've pulled away from, from the rest. The top one percent, and you know, from the Occupy movement, mm -hmm. sort of that that phrase, the ninety-nine percent and the one percent mm -hmm. enter the sort of the national consciousness. The top one percent wasn't quite at a record high in twenty fifteen, but pretty close to it. And I think it's uh, the way the stock market has been rising and corporate profits as well. Uh, it, it really would not be surprising if the top one percent right now are are at a record high. We won't know that for a few years when the data comes out, but, mm -hmm. but clearly we are in, by, by all intents and purposes, at, at historic levels of inequality. Okay, all right, yeah. And uh, so we talk about the folks in the, in the top 1% or, or higher. The rest, of, what has happened with the rest of the people? Uh, that's, <laughs> I'm glad you're raising that. Uh, well, if you look at Oregon's median income, and median income is the Oregonian right in the middle of the income ladder, so right? That half so, or so half he, or below. it's really the the typical Oregonian. So the typical Oregonian, uh, if you see their income on a graph, it looks like it, it's a flat line, because there's been so little progress over f close to 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, we're, we're, the median income is up maybe a thousand dollars over that span. So it's about thirty-four thousand dollars, and it's barely budged over that whole period. So. Income has not been, so it's, it's complete stagnation for 40, 40 uh, almost 40 decades, mm -hmm. uh, four decades, <laughs> uh, 40 years. Um, but I think that the, uh, at the same time that this is happening, the cost of, uh, of many essentials, uh, sort of healthcare, uh, 
college, mm -hmm. uh, for your kids, of, of housing, yeah. uh, have been rising a lot faster than mm -hmm. than uh, than other than the cost of many other things. So it's um, it really puts families in a very difficult situation. All right, great. That is, of course, the middle. Uh, there's uh, poverty; it, it remains uh, uh, elevated. Uh, it's really only. Um, we're only getting back up to where we were before the mm -hmm. before the Great Recession. Right. Yeah. And, and, and then for uh, the people that were not median, you know, the people that were in the la in the bottom twenty percent, mm -hmm. for instance, wh where are they at? Uh, I I don't have the the figure in my head. That that would be roughly the almost like the poverty level. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to be for a family of three, you know, it varies on family size, but it's somewhere around twenty uh, some. Twenty thousand dollars, roughly, and uh -huh. it's really a. Uh, uh, while it's considered the poverty line, you can be slightly above poverty, but still not be able to make ends meet. In fact, yeah. you're you're probably not. Uh, so, it's uh, there's a lot of fa families in our state that are struggling economically, even after what's basically nine years of economic growth since the mm -hmm. bottom of the Great Recession, and. Uh, uh, and so it, it does not uh, it does not bode well uh, uh, for going forward. It, it, we're basic, and we've been and we've we've seen this this play out before, where uh, there's a crash, uh, there's a lot of unemployment, a lot of economic hardship. Then growth comes, but um, but ultimately there's no no significant progress for for the vast majority of Oregonians. Mm -hmm. We're just either stagnating. Or, or at times it, things get worse. So, the, and, and the reason is because the structures have not changed. The public structures fundamentally have not altered. Not since, not you know, we had a mass. What, what was the biggest economic crisis since the since the great Re since the Great Depression? Mm -hmm. uh, that was the Great Recession uh, in 2008 and 2009. Despite all the damage th uh, that we suffered and hardship. The structures, underlying structures, have not changed. Right. Yeah. And, and, and so that underlying structure is is what you said, that the wealthy who have money are able to invest it to create more wealth for themselves. Yeah. The the underlying uh, policies that are that are helping create e income and wealth inequality. Mm -hmm. That long term trajectory is being is the result of the of the public policies that we have in place. Right. Okay. Yeah. So. Talk about what the Oregon legislature did in 2013. Yes. <laughs> so, and the reason why, uh, in 2013, the Oregon legislature uh, held a special session. Uh, they met out of out of their regular uh, schedule to enact what became known as the Grand Bargain. Mm -hmm. The Grand Bargain contained f several big pieces of legislation. One was PERS reform. One was a, uh, a prohibition on local regulation of GMOs. Uh, it had an education piece, but one of the central pieces of it was a tax package. And one of the bigger pieces of that tax package was a tax break on what's called pass-through income. And pass-through income is the income that certain business owners get. Uh, those, If you own an S corporation, a limited liability uh, company, a partnership, uh, you get uh, pass-through income. And what it means is that the profits of the business are not taxed at the business level, uh, it's not the business business that pays the tax on those profits. Rather, those profits get passed to the owner, and then uh, they pay the, the taxes on their personal income tax form. So, uh, we know from uh, from the numbers are quite clear, and I, I, I alluded to this before that most businesses and business income flows to those at the top of the income ladder. And so the, the legislature came in and gave a tax break, a re, a, the option of a lower tax rate on income that you get from your pass-through mm -hmm. business. And we said at the time, this is going to be a big tax break for the very rich. Mm -hmm. uh, and sure enough, the data now is in, hard data, tax data that we can look at. And we know that, uh, for example, the most recent year, in 2016, I believe, about 70% of the tax benefits mm -hmm. from this provision went to the to the folks making more than half a million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the top 1% already. To be in the, a member of the top 1% in Oregon, you need income of about 390,000 a year. So these so more than two thirds of this tax break are going to folks well in, well entrenched in the top 1%. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, 
people make it, Oregonians making $100,000 or less, and that's the vast majority of Oregonians. That vast group is together getting only 1% of the tax benefits from this provision. So, yeah, so it, essentially no, no, no benefit Almost not. Yeah, almost right. nothing, no, right. no. And, uh, and so this is what the legislature did in 2013. And, and in some ways, they were beating Donald Trump and the yeah. congressional GOP to the punch mm -hmm. because uh, the, uh, the tax plan passed at the, at the, by Congress in December contains a similar provision. It's not doesn't work exactly the same way, but it benefits many of the same groups. Uh, it's, a, it's a tax, uh, a tax deduction for pass-through income. Mm -hmm. So uh, now here in Oregon, those people that benefited from this uh, in 2013 will now get a second benefit from the federal government. Yes, many of them. It's not quite uh, yes. uh, 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 an exact mm -hmm. overlap. Uh, there's some differences, and the federal provision is very complicated. But yes, sa safe to say that many of the folks who are getting it here in Oregon now are going to get a, a, a second giveaway thanks to mm -hmm. Congress. OK, yeah. And the legislature is looking at addressing this this year. Uh, they are. They are. There is, they're dealing with many of the, much of the fallout, some of the fallout of the federal uh, tax plan. Um, it's in two ways. So one, the federal tax plan uh, changes in some ways the definition of taxable income. And the reason why that's important to note is that Oregon automatically connects to that definition. So if Congress changes that definition, Oregon automatically adopts it unless the legislature says, no, we're not going to follow Congress's lead. This tax deduction for pass-through income that I just mentioned, it's going to it's going to apply here in Oregon unless the legislature says, no, thank you, and we're going to disconnect from that provision. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that the legislature has to decide. Separately, we're, in, we're asking the legislature to get rid of uh, the Oregon-specific tax break on pass-through income, the, the one that, that the legislature gave away in 2013. The legislature needs to recognize that this is just a tax break for the rich. and. Uh, and it's a it's in essence a waste of money money that we could be investing in our schools um, in making making preschool available for kids making lowering college tuition extending health coverage there's there's a great deal of need uh, and there's so many better ways to use this yeah. money than mm -hmm. be giving it away to, to mm -hmm. the wealthiest Oregonians mm -hmm. okay and, and how much money have we been giving away so in the current budget period, in Oregon budgets on a two-year basis, right now it, it's estimated to cost about $200 million. Uh, it's projected to continue to grow to about $300 million in, in future budget periods. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is in one way of looking at it. It's not a huge amount, but it is about the same amount of money that we just approved uh, with the uh, Measure 101. Right, uh, that's one way to think about it. Yeah, it's it's within the ballpark. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's not it's a good chunk of change for Oregon. I mean, there's m a lot that you can do with 200 million. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, if you were thinking about other things that we might look at in the future uh, to address this inequality problem, I any suggestions you can? Well, uh, we have to recognize that it's. Uh, it's a problem of national scope. Mm -hmm. uh, and so ultimately, if we're going to shrink inequality down to size, it's going to take federal action. But here in Oregon, there's definitely things that we can do uh, to address the problem. I mean, the first thing that we, that we need is to, for the Oregon legislature to say we're not going to do any harm at least. You know? uh, and so, uh, the, the, so we need to stop enacting policies such as this tax break on pass-through income. Better yet, we need to. There's things that we can do to push back against inequality. In the tax area, there's a lot of uh, a lot that can be done. Um, uh, without getting into a lot of specifics, the yeah. main playbook is raise taxes on Oregon's riches or close to tax loopholes. That's another. I mean, it, a lot of it is just mm -hmm. money seeping out of the system. Corporations as well. I mean, uh, corp corporate taxes, raising corporate taxes, is a form of progressive taxation because most most sh shares uh, are owned by by the wealthy so uh, it's the shareholders who will pay who by and large pay corporate taxes mm -hmm. so uh, the strategies of raising cor uh, taxes on corporations and the most well-off are are the right approach uh, and then ultimately but it's not just to tax people to tax them mm -hmm. uh, it's to raise the revenue that we need to invest in Oregonians uh, to invest in human capital in education in health uh, and in the basic needs of Oregonians, like housing. We have a, 
a serious housing crisis in our state, mm -hmm. and that m puts people in a very vulnerable situation. Uh, when kids don't have a stable place to call home, yeah. uh, it makes them it makes it very hard for them to succeed in school. Right. Yeah, well, our time has run out, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. Right, yeah. <laughs> but uh, maybe we'll have you back and then talk some more. Definitely, thank yeah. you. Right. Great, so um, thank you. And uh, our guest today has been Juan Carlos Ordonza. Ordonez. Ordonez, uh, Communications Director for Oregon Center for Public Policy, advocating for the 99% of us on economic and other policy to create a prosperous and equitable Oregon on the web at www.ocpp.org. Remember to call your Oregon State Senator and Representative. Tell them to close the pass-through tax loophole we've just been talking about. Those bill numbers are SB 1528-3 in the Senate and HB 4026-2 in the House. One major source of wealth inequality is health care or the lack thereof. Having health care will be especially important moving forward as health care, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid come under attack at the federal level. Here in Oregon, the House of Representatives now has passed the a first in the nation proposed ballot referral, which would establish affordable health care as a fundamental right for all Oregonians. That bill, HJR 203, has now moved to the Oregon Senate. If the Senate approves it, it will appear on the November 2018 Oregon ballot for, uh, so that all Oregonians can say, health care is really fundamentally important to us and for all of us. Please call your Oregon Senator and tell them to support HJR 20, uh, yeah, 203, the HOPE Amendment. Looking forward to the November 2020 ballot, our friends at the Oregon Progressive Party have started collecting signatures on 2020-001, which would amend the Oregon Constitution to allow limits on campaign contributions and expenditures. You can help us get big special interest money out of Oregon elections. Contact me for signature sheets via email at David AFD dash, excuse me, David AFD at ymail.com or go to our website or.honest slash elections.com. Sign the petition at the bottom of the home page. Just print it, sign it, and mail it in. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope that we'll see you again next time. Bye.